Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Growth Stock Research. In an article on EV Inside, the author Mark Kane threw up a provoking question. Is there a different gravity in Europe or why do European EVs seem to have a competitive driving range? After all, most consumers are probably not aware that promoted range is sometimes not the real range. So did European car makers only invent the WLTP drive cycle to make their range estimates look better? Looking at the comparison, we note that the ratio between WLTP divided by the EPA range for the Porsche Taycan 4S is at 1.42. The Tesla Model X Long Range Plus has a greater EPA than WLTP range resulting in a ratio of only 0.9. So why is there such a big difference in current EVs? And this is indeed a problem for consumers. Assume for example that you want to buy a German EV you might first get to see a WLTP range estimate, which is rather optimistic if we then see the real world tests. This video is structured in the following way. Number one, understanding the drive cycle. Number two, is the WLTP skewed? And number three, bonus point, the Chinese drive cycle. Driving range estimates are of great interest if you buy an electric vehicle. However, they originally were invented to guarantee comparable conditions measuring fuel consumption for combustion engine cars. They consist of predefined test conditions in a fixed drive cycle that a car has to go through on a so-called dynamometer. As of now, there are two established drive cycles to measure EV driving ranges. These are the so-called EPA and the WLTP. The EPA drive cycle was published by the United States Environmental Protection Agency where it's got its name from. Formally, this drive cycle is called FPA 75. It was updated in 2008 and covers city driving and highway driving. The European equivalent is the worldwide harmonized light duty vehicles test procedure that replaced the outdated NEDC, the new European driving cycle, in its latest version from 2017. Its ambition is to be a pretty good estimate for driving all over the world, in all situations, and also covers highway and city use. It is based on over 475,000 miles of driving data from 14 different countries. Even though this cycle is more conservative than the NEDC, it still does not seem to accurately predict the real-world range of EVs. Independent tests of Europe's largest automobile association, the German ADAC, show that many EVs have a lower driving range in practice than the range claimed in terms of WLTP. This is not always the case, however. Several Teslas have a higher EPA than WLTP range. This could mean that either the battery, the operating strategy, or anything influencing the test results differs from other brands. But how do the range differences between EPA and WLTP arise? Although both cycles try to quantify the same thing, they differ significantly in several aspects. First, the WLTP uses a maximal speed of 81 miles per hour, which equates to 130 kilometers per hour in Europe. While this might be a typical, even conservative speed on a German highway, also known as the Autobahn, it is significantly higher than what would be expected on American roads. Second, EPA assumes a higher idling ratio, which seems to be more realistic than the WLTP. I mean, if you think of driving as a process of energy conversion, like electric energy into potential energy, for example, when you drive up the hill, uh, kinetic energy, like moving in general, and thermal energy, tires and brake, uh, discs and drag, you're losing much more while doing a city stop and go, as opposed to a smooth autobahn cruise with a car that has a good, thus low drag value. So is the WLTP skewed? We should acknowledge that all test procedures are almost exclusively based on combustion engine cars data. This might introduce a systematic error. For example, we know that EVs can provide much more acceleration than ICE vehicles. More importantly, they might be more sensitive to different features of the driving cycle or the test conditions than a traditional passenger cars. If one car, for example, has a lower drag value and loses less energy while cruising, it might benefit from the higher cruise ratio of the WLTP. In a round course test by Edmunds, 
the Porsche Taycan range beats the EPA estimate by almost one third, probably because of this effect. This also indicates that your personal range is very dependent on how you drive, the ambient temperature and your use case. On the one hand, it is surprising that a test procedure that seems to systematically overestimate the range is so highly valued for purchase recommendations and in data sheets by car manufacturers and salespeople. On the other hand, we do not believe this is intentional as the cycle is based on real, scientifically processed data. However, there were certainly no large electric vehicle data sets at the time. Until there is either a more specific cycle or user-orientated range calculators that incorporates your personal driving style and use case, we recommend using the EPA as a lower bound for the range. You should also look for more range reports from other real-world driving cases. Either way, stay vigilant and don't just take the best range estimated for granted. A recent example where our advice would be applied is the comparison between the Mercedes-Benz EQS and the Model S. If we trust the WLTP numbers, it suggests that the EQS could beat the range given the same battery size of the Model S. But due to the irregularities of the comparison of dry cycles and real-world tests, we are waiting for further independent reviews for a final verdict. Moving on to the last point. Over the next few years, we also expect the release of a Chinese drive cycle that fits better for the Chinese market. During our research, we found an article in the International Journal of Automotive Technology that describes the CLTC, China Light Duty Vehicle Test Cycle, developed by the China Automotive Technology and Research Center. It is built similar to the WLTP, but uses Chinese driving data. This makes sense as Chinese data wasn't incorporated in the WLTP. It might also cover more EV data than the WLTP. After all, China is by far the largest EV market in the world. We assume this to be just another standard that will help to compare ranges, keeping fixed test conditions. However, to give realistic estimates, either a value that incorporates more personalized values or a model that incorporates the uncertainty like a potential range could be useful. So what do you think? What drive cycle range estimate do you trust the most? Did you know that WLTP and EPA ranges can sometimes be very different? And do you think European car makers intentionally use the WLTP range to promote their cars to make them seem competitive? We will reply to every single comment and are planning to make further research-based videos on EVs as well as EV companies with a focus on upcoming EV players such as Lucid. Vielen Dank.